Uh, like she said, uh, my name is Paula Gould. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Green Cloud. And Green Cloud is a cloud software stack for infrastructure. Um, we have a few different solutions um, that cater to the entire uh, cloud spectrum. So private, hybrid, and public. So who are we? Um, we're an Icelandic startup. We were started by Erika Rapsen and Trygvi Lauersen. We're completely backed by Icelandic funding. And of course, we're headquartered here. Uh, so we built a software solution <coughs> to make the cloud more easy, uh, easily accessible. Um, at the time that Eike and Trygvi were developing uh, what is now Green Cloud, um, they had an e-government solutions company. And that company was running into some issues on how to bring government forward and make uh, self-service for, for the average citizen uh, something that could kind of come to fruition. So they saw the cloud as an opportunity um, to do that, but the cloud was very difficult to use. So uh, of course the crash happened and suddenly everyone had a little bit close to nothing to do. And, um, and so they started working on this software product to, to bring uh, um, an easier cloud to the market. So we launched our business with a green ocean strategy, and I'll get into what that is in a, in a couple of minutes. And one of, a, a part of a green ocean strategy is the environmental aspects of it. So we brought a public cloud um, to the market that is powered in data centers that are ISO 14001 certified. So what that means is that our data, our customers' data, and all of our own operations are run in data centers that have been rubber stamped as some of the more environmentally friendly um, in, in the world. And then we came to market finally. We were founded in 2010. We came to market finally in October of 2012. And we came to market as a public cloud. So when we're talking about ocean strategies, I kind of stole this slide actually from an educator in Thailand who has a number of different marketing strategy uh, presentations. Um, I put the URL down there. It's definitely worth checking out. But I felt he concisely wrapped up the differences in the three major strategies. And as you can see on the top bullet, it's very clear that cultivating a green market space was an opportune uh, uh, way for us to come to market. And I'll dive a little bit deeper into what that actually means. Um, the cloud market is really uh, crowded. So we needed a way to differentiate ourselves, mostly to get market traction. We knew we had a good product, but we needed to find a way for people to find out about it. So the reason why we came to market at, with a green ocean strategy was because at the same time that Aki and Trigview were building this software to run a public cloud, there was reports coming out from Gartner and McKinsey. Gartner estimated that the ICT industry, so the information communications technology industry, represented about 2% of total global carbon emissions. To give perspective to that, at the time it was actually rivaling the aviation industry, and it's actually estimated that by 2012, the ICT industry actually surpassed the aviation industry in CO2 output. Then to compound that, McKinsey came out with a report in 2009 that stated that if ICT stayed on its track, it was going to represent about 4% of total global carbon emissions, which is, of course, rivaling the automotive industry. So ICT has kind of become you know, the, the bad guy in environmental um, responsibility. So how does this factor into us directly? Um, when we found out, we read the reports with McKinsey and Gardner, and we tried to trace back, like, why is ICT actually producing so much CO2? And it's really at the data center level. If you trace any part of your supply chain back to its roots, and in this case for data, it's actually the data center. And then you look into where the data centers are located and the energy grids available to those data centers you'll see that most data centers are actually run by fossil fuel, or powered by fossil fuels. And cloud providers obviously capitalize on data centers. Um, so if you look at a cloud provider's supply chain, whether it's the energy supply chain or uh, the data supply chain, you'll see that they're actually using less than 20% renewables. 
So because of these reports, in large part, the data industry, and specifically ICT, started looking into how they could actually disprove this. And the way they did that was to use their power usage metric. So power usage efficiency, it's the PUE number in there. And they started showing how the data industry is actually not as, uh, uh, as unsustainable as, as these reports had indicated. And that they were showing their sustainability through how efficient they were actually using their, their energy. But what that metric actually misses is the type of energy that's being used to power those uh, data centers and make them more efficient. So we came up with another way to measure sustainability, and that was GPUE, which is this column over here. And you'll see that there's a significant difference in a lot of cases between them. So GPUE actually takes into consideration the mix of the power being used in the grid, and that actually determines its actual sustainability. So what we've learned, concluded is that efficiency, whether the data industry wants to tell you or one way or another, actually does not necessarily equate to sustainability. At the same time that we're dealing with the CO2 conundrum, we're also faced with a hypergrowth challenge. That hypergrowth challenge is completely related to where our data is. All of you have phones. I've seen a few of you take pictures. You're probably sending emails. All of that data has to go somewhere, has to be processed somewhere, and has to be stored somewhere. And so, so far, only 1% of total global data has actually been processed, which is mind-blowing if you really think about all of our activities are actually connected to the internet. And that data is actually doubling every two years. So that number is compounding every single year. And to put that into even greater perspective, has anyone ever heard of a zettabyte here? <laughs> well, yes, of course. <laughs> anyone in tech knows what a zettabyte is, I guess. Um, so you'll see where we are now. And you'll see it's kind of almost doubling in some cases. And it's estimated that by 2020, and this graph is actually wrong. I looked up more data from the summer. And it was estimated at uh, 40 zettabytes of data being stored. It's actually at 44 now. So um, since most of you know zettabytes, there are some of you who might not. That's about 4.4 trillion gigabytes of data. But there are major advantages to, the public, uh, to cloud in general. So um, we're not just going to abandon cloud because there's a sustainability issue. The idea is to drive the industry forward and find ways to actually fix the issue. So cloud offers you a number of different advantages. Self-service is one of them. If you have a private cloud, your employees can access your infrastructure, spin up instances, and create websites without having to go through a sysadmin and get permission and take, take infrastructure away from another department. It allows you to scale elastically. So what that means is instead of procuring servers to meet peak periods, you can actually procure servers to meet your, your needs. And then for the peak periods, you can burst into a public cloud or another environment. So you're actually saving more money because you're not, using, you're not wasting servers uh, and wasting money procuring those servers. Um, and it keeps costs down, too, because you can scale up and scale down, and you're only paying for what you use. And the software is customizable. I think that this is actually becoming more and more so as uh, open source software makes its way into the private cloud environment. And so I want to capitalize on the infrastructure I've already invested in and the systems and processes and tools that I use on that infrastructure. But I also want to make sure that I'm using uh, interfaces that enable me to prepare for the future and capitalize on that open source um, culture where it's constantly evolving and, um, and designed to meet the future. And then, of course, infrastructure transparency is another major one. Right now, well, not right now, but a couple of years ago, people had infrastructure and they had an interface that showed them how much uh, of that infrastructure they were using. But it didn't break it down into department or to user. And they weren't able to actually see where their peaks were as transparently as they can today. So the cloud enables that. Um, we have a lot of those metrics in our own dashboard. And it lets people see, like, oh, OK, well, who knew the marketing department was actually using a lot of our infrastructure for their microsites? Um, those are things that people don't think about. So now they have greater transparency and can make better decisions. And as a result of that, they're using their hardware more efficiently. So this year, we take a look at 
um, the numbers between 2013 and 2014, and we actually were surprised to see a significant difference. They estimate that the public cloud this year represents $34.17 billion in revenue. And it's growing at 50% each year, so you can imagine that's also going to compound. But the private cloud, which is a relatively new market, still in its infancy, already represented $5.7 billion in revenue. So what does it have to do with our green ocean strategy? So when we were looking at the CO2 conundrum, and then we were looking at how the cloud needed to be easier to use, we discovered that we were in a really great position being in Iceland because we have access to renewable energy very cheaply. And of course, our data centers use natural cool air to keep costs down as well. So what that we did was when we were building the, uh, the strategy for coming to market, we really started promoting the information we saw in these Gartner and McKinsey reports. And we became known as the cloud company that not only was making the cloud pretty and easy to use and kind of almost consumer friendly, but we were also enabling people to understand how cloud interrelated with this, the environmental issues. So we started talking about how we, for our own operations and management, only use data centers that are certified ISO 14001. And we started talking about how you, by using green cloud, you're actually actively reducing your CO2 because you're powering your data through data centers that were renewable powered instead of buying carbon credits to offset that. So we were hoping that that would be a really good strategy and then it turned out it really, really was. And as a result, we gained market traction in both Europe and North America. Additionally, it also put us in front of environmental watchdog organizations and, uh, and others like companies that had really strong CSR policies really, really liked us. And then analysts started to get in on on what we were doing. So we got significant media coverage. As you can see in The Guardian, Forbes, Data Center Knowledge is obviously a big industry um, news site. And it also enabled us to showcase the partners that we were working with. When the Greenpeace report came out this year, we were once again highlighted as a cloud company that was actually looking positively towards the future and understanding um, what we needed to do to actually power our servers in the future, not only from an environmental standpoint, but from, a, from a, just a survival and business standpoint. So we were able to include Vanya in the Guardian article um, that resulted from that Greenpeace report. So we learned a lot along the way. And what we learned was that even though we came to market as a public cloud, if you got down to the core of our business, and when we put the public cloud out in the market, we got, of course, a lot of feedback. And that feedback was, you know, we really love the public cloud, but we're this giant enterprise, and we have regulatory compliance restrictions, and our executive team doesn't trust the public cloud. But we really, really want to use all of the systems and, and services and features that you put into your public cloud. How can we do that? And being a nimble company, we're like, we'll work with you to find out. So we started doing pilot programs. And those pilot programs resulted in us discovering that we're actually not a public cloud company. We're a software company that runs clouds. So that was a really defining moment for us at the end of last year. And it set the path for our, um, our market reach this year. And then <clears throat> many of those same customers that wanted to use the public cloud but can't, but want the software, also had other needs that we hadn't really thought about, like managing multiple data center locations and geo zones. That's something the average consumer who's spinning up a couple of instances for their website don't really see or think about. But the enterprise and small business customers do. And it enables them to scale, and they want all of those things in a single pane of glass. So we had to determine how we were actually going to figure that out for them. And then, additionally, there was a greater demand from SMBs and enterprise customers who needed private and hybrid cloud solutions that enabled them to manage VMs and bare metal uh, in one place, which was another thing that we uh, worked significantly on this year. So when we were analyzing how we could actually bring all of this together, we started talking to our data center partners, and we asked them, you know, you guys are data centers, you have clients in the data centers, a lot of you need cloud services. How do we actually work with you 
to bring these cloud services to your own to your own customers and enable you to compete against other data centers who already have cloud services. And then Iceland, of course, being in the middle of Europe and the US has actually been a true advantage to us. We really did not anticipate that. At least I didn't anticipate that because I'm not from here. Um, but it actually helps us not only service a greater market, provide uh, cloud services that are cost effective because of the renewable energy, and it also enabled us to really find uh, amazing data center partners at home. Um, we now, of course, have data center partners abroad as well who also use renewable energy. But it was really great to start here and to build the business here. And then our background expertise in bringing a public cloud to market actually was a huge leg up for us. And I, don't th I think we're now actually just realizing the significance of that exp expertise. Because the more pilot programs we do with these major enterprise customers and small businesses, the more we're actually seeing that they really want a public cloud. But they have no idea what that actually means. They just know they want these, they want it to fit with their monitoring solutions, they want to be able to use the billing systems they're already using, and they want to see their energy usage metrics, particularly in the UK, where you're taxed for your carbon and your energy usage. So uh, we're, we're finding ourselves really at home now in this new space. And then of course, it's always really nice when people like you. And every time we travel and every customer we interact with, we get a lot of positive feedback. Because of our attention to customer service, because of our knowledge base in the public cloud and now of the private and hybrid cloud, we're actually getting pretty significant market traction. So the end result of us actually analyzing all of these things being a software company has led us to QStack. QStack is the private and hybrid cloud solution that we developed out of the software that we had for the public cloud. It's browser-based administration, which means um, uh, you're able to create user accounts, manage APIs, um, and actually automate through APIs. Uh, we enable you to power your cloud with detailed customization, and that's from the hardware level all the way up to the interface level. And then deploying QStack, again, like I said in the beginning, from a private, hybrid, and public standpoint. And then the transparency of utilization costs is key, both to the enterprise and small business customers. And that we accomplish through built-in metering. But it's also brandable, as you can see, um, Advania Cloud up there, which, who we've partnered with for QStack and some of our others. Um, so when I'm an enterprise or I'm a data center, my customers trust me, my employees trust me. I want the brand experience to be um, consistent throughout their entire uh, experience with the company and with the brand. So that has actually been a real key selling point for us. And then the market that we've established as a result of researching and doing these pilots has led us to uh, both EU and US enterprises and SMBs that have private infrastructure but have an implemented cloud and are looking to. Enterprises with regulatory compliance mandates, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, with the UK in particularly. And then companies with a need for IT productivity, agility, uh, flexibility, visibility, any of the illities, um, and, the, and, and of course lower, lowering costs, which is the bottom line really determines everything. And the industry segments that are adopting cloud in our research, and then of course in the market as well, and this is for across public, private, and hybrid, are obviously data centers and co-locations. HPC research facilities, we're actually working with a lot of medical research facilities as well. Financial and investment institutions. Telcos, I think, are one of the biggest market segments. Think about that with your phones and your internet and who you buy your, your internet from. Uh, all of that information is processed and stored somewhere. So telcos, it's become really important because they've had to scale really quickly. And then there's many, many others, but those are the top. So in summary, our green ocean strategy, what, whatever strategy you use, whether it's red, blue, or green, but the green ocean strategy for us actually enabled us to come to a market that was extremely crowded. There was a lot of naysayers, like another cloud infrastructure services come to market. Why are they any different? And um, it was a real defining moment for us when we would go to events and they would be like, you're just like everyone else. Sure, your, your interface is prettier. Sure, you're a friendly group of people. We're all interested in Iceland because it's so hip to visit there right now. Um, and of course, you have the renewable energy. That's all well and good, but nobody in infrastructure cares about renewable energy. 
And then you'd leave those conferences and the market would tell you otherwise. Apple would be promoting its sustainability initiatives and, talk, and Google would be talking about how they want, they're shooting for 80% renewable. So we actually, we knew we were going in the right direction, but it was amazing to hear all of these big companies that we're hoping to be one day tell us that we're actually right and that it actually is important. And as a result of that, the media also rallied around it. So the exponential IT growth has increased the industry's CO2 footprint. That's not changing. So the more uh, renewable energy powered cloud services and data centers there are that are available and the more we explore how we can actually utilize renewables for this market segment, the better, the better the industry is going to be. And because of the strategy that we came to market with, we're actually the leaders and those, we're the ones that people come to to discuss their, their sustainability uh, initiatives and, and path. And then what we've also found, and this is pretty key to our success, is that solutions that capitalize on current IT investment. So you can use the infrastructure that you've spent millions of dollars on, but the solutions that are geared towards the future as well, so thinking about using open source technologies and working with open source communities to bring open source technologies to the enterprise are the ones that win, and that's where we're actually seeing the most significant market traction. So and Green Cloud has proven to be a leader in cloud infrastructure solutions already at a young age. We're a small company. We have uh, 40 people, I think, maybe a little bit more than that now. And we've been able to offer turnkey efficient solutions for any cloud infrastructure. And then the energy and CO2 transparency is still unique to us. We're the only cloud provider that actually offers that in dashboard. So you're looking at all your instances, and then you can also see your energy metrics, and you can even break it down per user and per department. So you can pull out the bad guys in your, in your company. Um, and then partnering with DCs like Advania, who use sustainable renewables, has actually been a significant advantage to us. We have another partner in Seattle, and they use 95% renewable, which is still within our threshold of high use of sustainables. And um, so we're really happy to keep finding throughout the world different areas and geozones that we can capitalize on. And then enabling businesses to focus on their growth while minimizing their infrastructure management is key to winning business. So like I said, we're growing. Um, our flagship office is in Reykjavik, just down the street. You can always come visit us. Um, and we're opening an office in the US in Seattle, pretty close to our, where our data center is. And then also we have a sales and support uh, office in Brazil, in Natal, Brazil. And that's actually evolving. That's, um, we've actually found data center partners that also are util utilizing uh, renewable energy. So we've actually found another availability zone to kind of replicate um, where, we, where we have available services. And that's about it. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions, come find me.